Hello and welcome to this um, Zerto virtual replication demo session. Today we are covering um, a test failover for a virtual protection group, which I will demonstrate to you in a minute. So about the infrastructure, we see that we have two sites in Zerto, uh, one in Hamburg, one in Darmstadt. Uh, those are shown here um, as uh, separate virtual centers. And you see in the, in the Hamburg data center, we got four VMs running SAP, which are in one protection group. And I'm going to do a failover test for this um, SAP. So Zerto does a non-disruptive failover. So it keeps the um, production environment up and running while we create a new set of VMs in a uh, separated network, isolated network, so that we can run both on at the same time and um, do uh, non-disruptive failover testing. And I'll show you how this works now. So let's um, select the failover test here. Now set failover. We choose the virtual protection group in question. And we can select one of those many checkpoints. I just choose the latest now. And we also see that we have configured a boot order for the virtual machines so that the database VM will run first, wait a second, and then um, starting the consecutive VMs. Now we are ready to start a failover test. This script is now starting uh, the configuration of the failover VMs. And we see that here. So in my production data center, the VMs are still running and serving IOs, and anybody could work on SAP right now. But in the DR side, we see a couple new VMs appearing. So we have all the required disks already replicated. Um, so all we need to do is now to create new virtual machines. We know how they look like, how much CPU and RAM and network cards they have. And after we created those bulk VMs, we then attach the um, respective virtual disks to those VMs and power the VMs on. So this is probably going to take two or three minutes, and we can see the status in the tool uh, in the task list here in the vCenter. As you can see now, the database VM has powered on, so it's now booting. Um, I have configured 30 seconds of boot delay until the second group, the application server one and two, will start. So you can see this very soon. And once those two VMs have been powered on, um, the index uh, server will um, follow as last. Now here we go, application one and two powering on. So. Let's uh, look into the console of my database server. And you can see Windows is loaded or loading. And we will be able to log into this VM very soon. And this shows uh, that uh, the failover VMs are running but at the same time, I can also open a console into the production VM. And you also see that this VM is online and serving IOs. So we can log in here. I log in here. If I go back into my into my um, administration interface, I see that the failover test has been completed. Um, now I still have all the time I need to to do whatever tests required in my failover VMs, 
so that um, we can be sure um, the failover was successful. And this is that one here now. Um, yeah, and the administrator could do anything he needs. Um, the failover test can take uh, as long as required. So let's assume this one was positive. And then we can stop the failover test now. We set the result as a success. We can also put in some notes if you want. And if I stop it now, it will clean up the DR side. means it will power off the failover VMs here in Darmstadt. This is happening right now. And um, it will deregister all the VMs, but it will, of course, still keep the recovery disks as they were before while Hamburg is still up and running and serving IOs. Lastly, we can also create a failover test report for this activity. So let's go into the reports tab, choose recovery reports, and you will see a failover test here. Um, and the one below is the newest, the one we just did right now. I export this as a PDF document and those are the results. So we can see that the administrator initiated the test um, at this point in time. Uh, the time we took was 2 minutes 11 until all the VMs were running and booted. And in the second um, page, you can see all the uh, resources which were used for the test and also all the steps Certo performed to automatically do that uh, failover test for you. And at the bottom line, um, the application owner could sign um, that he tested the application and everything was running. And then you have everything you need to prove DR compliance or compliance um, for any regulations um, yeah, associated to disaster recovery. And you can prove that you are always able to recover your protected applications. Yeah, so the test has been finished and we see, uh, we can see it in the, in the vCenter server. The VMs have been gone and everything looks like before. Thank you very much for uh, watching this video and um, watch out for more stuff coming from me very soon. Goodbye.